My name is John Hawkins, and today I'm going to tell you about genetic algorithms. A genetic algorithm is a very, extremely, general optimization algorithm modeled on the process of natural selection. It is one of a family of algorithms modeled on natural selection, called evolutionary algorithms, but genetic algorithms is defined by the fact that it incorporates the idea of sexual reproduction or, as biologists more generally call it, genetic recombination. In 1859, Charles Darwin wrote The Origin of Species. And, about a hundred years later, Niels Ahl Baricelli was the first to simulate evolution on a computer, to try to reproduce biological evolution, or something similar to it, on a computer a few years later, in the 1960s, Ingo Reckenberg latched onto this idea of the genetic algorithm, but realizing that this was much, much more generalizable. The process of evolution is an algorithm not restricted to the world of biology, he, no he recognized, but something that can be applied to any optimization problem. So, let's look at evolution as an algorithm, first in the natural world. In the natural world, there is a population of organisms. The life cycle of that organism is an implicit fitness function of that organism. This, is, this was Darwin's great idea, that n nature itself would select fit organisms for the next generation. Organisms that could find their own food, protect themselves from predators, and find m others to mate with. So, the new population selects these parents based on fitness, though with a notable amount of stochasticity in the process. And these new children are created through combinations of DNA, through crossovers and mutations of that DNA, in the simplest case. These children then replace the old population, and the process repeats indefinitely, creating better and better organisms. So, in the 1960s, Ingo Reckenberg and others, mathematicians, computer scientists, took a look at this and said, boy by golly, that is a fully generalizable optimization algorithm. Any problem for which we can define a good fitness metric um, for a building truss strength to weight ratio, we want to maximize that. For a robot trajectory, we want to, we want to minimize energy or maybe minimize time. For any process, uh, any even a mathematical function that we want to maximize or minimize, anything that we need to optimize, we can use this algorithm to approach the problem. We start with a random population of organisms. Uh, each organism is a potential solution to our problem. Uh, we encode that in DNA. Uh, DNA in quotation marks. We come up with a mathematical representation that is a, an effective chromosome. Then we evaluate the fitness of each organism against that fitness metric, create a new population with parents stochastically based on their fitness, um, create new children through crossovers and mutation of that DNA, and uh, replace the old population and repeat. And this is an effective optimization algorithm. So, in order to help explain how each of these steps work, let's consider an example problem. So, here is a ex uh, problem we've used several times in our computational statistics course this semester. Find the volcano. So, we are given a set of noisy temperature data on the border of a square state. Um, for some reason, our state is so completely broke, we can't take our own temperature measurements. We have to use temperature measurements from our neighboring states or something else, whatever. It's a, it's a contrived scenario. Um, and we have this data. The data suggests that a volcano is about to erupt. We see this fantastically high temperature, and we say, oh, a volcano is about to erupt. Um, so we want to find where that volcano is so we can evacuate the people nearby. So here is our data. It's very noisy. And we have a model that can't, that we are given. Here is our temperature model of how the temperature distribution uh, with a base temperature, a max temperature, is distributed around 
x0 and y0, the location of the volcano. We model this as a Gaussian um, around the volcano. Okay, so we want to find the parameters t0, t1, x0, y0, and lambda, lambda being the standard deviation of this Gaussian, that best fit this model to the data. So in previous uh, lessons in our computational statistics course, we determined that the way to find a best fit uh, is to minimize the chi-square statistic here of uh, the data. So the chi-square statistic is a function of the parameter vector, these guys. Uh, it takes the temperature observed minus the temperature predicted by the model at our data points x i and y i given the parameters b and uh, we divide by a standard deviation of 30 we are given in our problem statement that the standard deviation of the error and measurement is 30 and we wish to minimize this chi-square statistic in order to find the best fit so we see the word minimize we think optimize and we think hmm maybe we could try a genetic algorithm on this so we go through the genetic algorithm process. First, we need to encode our possible solutions into uh, the DNA of our organisms. Each, each solution is an organism, each proposed solution is an organism, and we need some way to represent that solution as DNA in a chromosome. So for our case, we have five numbers base temperature, max temperature, x0, y0, and lambda. And we will do what is actually normally done. The most common way to do this is to convert to binary. So we have an array of ones and zeros that represent our numbers, and this serves as a valid chromosome. Each organism has one chromosome. Each chromosome encodes five numbers, and encoding order is very important. It's important what is next to what. And we'll discuss that more in the crossover step. But for now, convert to binary, and that's our DNA. So next, for each chromosome, we, we need to take the values in, represented in that and calculate the fitness of that quote-unquote organism. So this is easy usually to determine the fitness function. In our case we said we want to minimize the chi-square function so we will maximize 1 over chi-square. So next we have all of our DNA encoded we know our fitness, we've calculated our fitness of each organism in our current generation. Next we need to select parents we said earlier that this needs to be a sort of a random process. Now naively you might think, well okay, I have a generation of organisms. For my next generation, I clearly want to select my best fit and have my two or three best solutions just breed an entire new generation. And this turns out to be um, actually completely wrong. What you need is genetic variation. The algorithm depends on having sufficient genetic variation in your gene pool in order to search the space more completely. So in order to introduce some randomness into it, to select parents stochastically based on their fitness, the most standard method I've seen used is the roulette wheel algorithm. There are others, the rank al algorithms and other things, but here we'll look at the roulette algorithm. 